imagine taking your generosity to the next level, impacting more lives and leaving a godly legacy for generations to come. Get ideas and strategies to do just that when you listen to these personal stories from high-level kingdom champions. The Kingdom Investor Podcast showcases business leaders who have moved from success to significance, sharing how they use worldly wealth for kingdom impact. Discover how they grew in generosity, impacted more lives, and built godly legacies. You'll find motivation, inspiration, and practical steps to grow as a kingdom investor. Hello, kingdom investors. Welcome to the show. I have with me my friends, Ken and Rachel Wick and David Clinton, my co-host. Hey, Rachel and Ken, would you pray for us? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share with, with David and, and today. And we also ask that you would bless the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our heads, and the inspiration in our hearts, so that we may help advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you guys. Hey, Ken and Rachel, would you share a little bit about your background and your story and how you guys got into what you're doing now? Sure. Both of us are former teachers, former educators. I taught geography, history. Eventually, I taught computers and became an IT director and spent 30 years in public education. And I was an art teacher. I taught all grade levels for about 25 years. And then fell in love with real estate halfway through. We've had rental property since about 2004 in our local area here. And about four years ago, we started a training program to learn how to sit and get a family. So where are you guys coming from? We're up here in Minnesota, the northern land. All right. And is there a particularly formative life experience that really kind of shaped who you guys are now? Oh, there's quite a few. Take your pick. Well, yeah. Uh, Literally enough, I was reading my Bible study. A Bible study this morning about the Bible study it was written by Jason Gray, who was a popular Christian songwriter, and he talked about the Bible study about basically about how his crooked road led him to God, and no matter how many ups and downs he had, how many blessings and setbacks he had, he looks back and he realizes oh, this led me to God. So we've had similar situations. We're a blended family. We're both divorced. We raised six children between the two of us. And so if I had to pick one thing that probably took it in my life, anything else, that would be the event. Yeah, and for, for me as well, I actually came to know the Lord at age 33, and I, that has to be, you know, the pinnacle of everything because everything changed. I stopped being so focused on myself and a little bit more focused on other people. and. And learning about him, he, he really guided me himself. And so through that, even, even my journey into real estate, that was led through that. My grandparents had owned a fourplex out in California when I was younger. And for some reason, around that age of 33, maybe that's when you start kind of thinking ahead and planning for your children's children and just, you know, kids going up to college. And so I started thinking, you know, what could, what could we do to give them a better future? I mean, as teachers, we're servants. We know we're serving. But we also aren't going to, you know, be extensively wealthy, you know, to be able to afford all of that. So real estate popped in my mind and how my grandparents did so well off of a simple fourplex in California that it helped our entire family. And so that's kind of how it kicked off the initial learning about multifamily through the Carlton Sheets program back in the day. For those of you that are older, like, oh. that says anything. They were on video back then. And then, yeah, a triplex kind of kicked it all off. And even God was there during that. I remember there was absolutely no reason that we, and this was just before Ken and I got together. There was absolutely no reason <laughs> I shouldn't have been able to close that deal because <laughs> it was, I didn't know what I was doing. Basically, the broker did so much for me. He even found some special financing in town. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I did was come up with a little bit of creative financing to make that deal happen. And I felt God's presence and I didn't even know what it was at the time. I learned not not long after that, though, that he was right there on that deal. That's so have it. Our listeners and our, our focus, one of our main focus on the show is talking about a journey from success to significance. 
And I was wondering, how would you focus? How would you define success in your own life? So for us, success is being able to help other people and give back. Rachel said, as teachers, you're always doing that anyway in your daily lives. And post-education careers, we were thinking about real estate and thinking, how can we really give back to other people? We ended up joining the Kick Mario group that David were a part of for a while. And went to it, even before we joined it, we went to a meeting out in San Diego, California. Listen to this gentleman stand up and, and start to talk about this organization called Apartment Life. And we were like, what's Apartment Life? Well, he went on to say that, to describe how Apartment Life puts a couple into an apartment complex. And that couple is a resource and a community planner and the church connection and to bring help to people that live in apartments because over 70% of people that live in apartments actually consider themselves pretty lonely. So we thought, what a great way to give back as we're moving through our multifamily journey. That's our passion too, is to try and give back. Plus, even before this whole multifamily thing started, we started an organization called Doors to Donate. We'll let Rachel tell that. So this was straight out of prayer. So before... And we took RE Mentor for our training for syndication. Before that started, I was feeling kind of restless. Ken had already exited education. I was feeling like it was time to move on kind of to real estate in some way, shape or form. Didn't know even what that was going to be. And I remember praying, and this was a year before I exited education. I remember praying and kind of asking the Lord, you know, I know we're serving as teacher, but what can we do in real estate that would be serving too? I, I couldn't really wrap my head around that. And the Lord showed me a picture. I'm an artist, so he often, I see pictures sometimes or dreams and, or, or I hear them in a different way. But he showed me doors to donate.org, literally like words. And I thought, okay, doors to donate.org. An organization, you know, like that freaked me out, honestly. You know, God, God always put, gives things that are way bigger than you. So I thought, okay, that really might, that could be something. How do we do it? And then all of a sudden he gave me a knowing that we were to, we sponsored a child through World Vision at the time. We've had a, a child for many years. And all of a sudden I knew we were supposed to sponsor one child per rental door that we had at the time. And at the time we had five. And so we couldn't afford it on our teacher's salaries. We couldn't afford to do it, but we're like, okay, God's done so many miraculous things that it was like, okay, we know he'll be able to make it work. So I came out, I told Ken, and I'm like, I think, I think we're supposed to sponsor one child for every rental door we have. And then we talked about it. And we're like, okay. And again, because of the faith God has truly built up in us, we're like, let's do one extra child. Nah. <laughs> we really know we can't afford the city. And a two per door <laughs> or one per door plus one. One per door plus the next opportunity. I love it. Yeah. So, you know, so we started a journey with six children sponsored through World Vision and got to know them and just kind of plugged along. And then when God had said, just give me one more year of teaching. And so I was like, OK, all right, I can do this one more year, you know. And um, so that's what we did. And then right at the end of that year, Ken kind of heard a, a sponsorship commercial, let's call it, for in our area that RE Mentor was coming to do kind of a, an intro, who they are, what they do. Mm -hmm. And that kind of stirred us to go to that and it kind of started the whole journey. That's amazing. And with multifamily, you can sponsor a lot more children with a lot more doors. Than right. That was a, yeah, a blessing and a dilemma. How do we do that? You know? Right. It sounds like, if I'm hearing you right, your definition of success started with a definition of significance from day one. Is that, is that right? Oh, I truly believe so. Like I, like I said, nobody's being a teacher, but the reason you do that, and I was a coach too, many years, the reason you do that is give back and because you have a passion for it. And it, just, it was just a natural transition into significance in the real estate world as well. And it's, we know that financially it helps investors build their family legacy. It helps the people if, if we as landlords or as asset managers help the community build up within, within the complexes, it helps them. We know that it can also impact just a podcast like this. And we go across various venues. We can talk about the Lord openly and freely. I couldn't do that when I was teaching and it was such, it, it hurt my heart, honestly. So 
for us, this is kind of, you know, it's freeing. It's us being our full self with all the things that we love to do. And, and we get to, God's letting us help people and share his love. And we get to work together. And we get to work together. What uh, on this journey so far, what would you say you've learned that you, you didn't really expect? Relationships, networking, relationships is the big the big thing. Actually, get rid of introvert, which isn't which isn't normal when you're a teacher, but it's somehow I struggle to do that. And Rachel, I hard to believe this, but she's an extrovert. She'll talk to anybody at, at like about any topics. So we we went into I went into this thinking, you know, we'll just sit in our quiet little office and do our quiet little thing. She dragged me into so many conversations and but it's probably been the biggest stretch of our marriage yeah. trying to trying to be in the same space and I'm talking all the time where I, I'll talk to investors. I'll, you know, teach people. I, I love, I think you talk all day about. Yeah. And this really, you know, Rachel mentioned, we took the venture trip. Part of that organization's annual event is to have a big, big meetup. This this particular time in 2019, it was in Austin. And so we decided, well, I'll we'll go I'll see what it's about. A thousand people are there. All of them are interested in multifamily real estate, right? So we get there, the opening keynote session, I was sitting there listening to a, a person finish it, and he says, now stand up and introduce yourself to these five different people. So I stand up and there's a tap on my shoulder from behind us. And, and these two guys are standing there, so introduce themselves. And they say, you know, they start talking about our mentor in real estate. We got to know a little bit at that conference. And then subsequently, like I said, we have been to several networking events. Subsequently, we went to a, a event in Chicago, another one in Atlanta, and saw the same two guys. Okay. And kept on put into them. Okay, God, what's going on here? So they invite us out for supper and say, hey, we've got this 36 unit uh, apartment complex in Las Vegas, and we're looking for investors. Would you like to invest? And I, I was pretty leery, but the, another coincidence that happened was the day before we left for this last conference, my mother passed away in her house. So we had a big chunk of money. The I day before. I need to do something. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. So as I'm talking to these, as we're talking to these guys, they start quoting Bible passages to us. <laughs> and so we go back to the hotel room and pray about it. And all the next day and say, yep. And well, it turns out we have three deals with this in two partners. And they're invested in one of our deals in Dubai, in Iowa. And all of the deals have a give back component. The first apartment complex that we invested in sold so quickly that we didn't have a chance to implement any kind of community. Yeah, cool. oh, they had plans to put in like a, a common type of thing. The second one, 22 unit complex, residents that takes homeless veterans, gives them housing, gives them some education or training, and helps them find a job and move on. Yeah. And, and we have three kids in the military, so it was like, oh. And no break there. Do you know? <laughs> God was all over it. It was amazing. The other thing you forgot to mention, this uh, conference that we went to, this very first conference, <laughs> we get an email about two weeks before oh, yeah. from the organization that says, if you've ever given back through your real estate, please email us your story. And I'm like, that form, you know, for those of you that already are walking with the Lord, you know that those platforms are a moment to speak for him. And him to speak through you. And I was like, Ken, this is it. That's why God told us to do doors to donate. And that's why God told us to sponsor one child. Like we knew the steps God did for us to be able to submit that email. So we did. We told our story. Sure enough, they asked us if we'll come up and speak at this 1,000 person real estate conference. And we've never even closed a large real estate deal, right? So here it is. Right? I know. So we were like, okay, God, what do you want us to share? Say, and us, along with probably eight other people, were able to get up and talk about their give back story. And it still chokes me up because one after another completely testified about the Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And it was, you know, the Lord was with everyone. It was just amazing, just a, an amazing testimony. And everybody got to hear how God's at work in their lives. You know, in, in all honesty, today I prayed, we pray the same thing every time before we come on. And it's like, Lord, what do you want to say to the people? And today he did say that he loved for them to know that his love for them is real. And just so whoever's listening there, there must be some reason somebody needed to know that today. That's awesome. Thank you guys. I, I, it's so fun to look backwards and see how God has prepared us for this moment. 
right? That's one of my favorite things in my relationship with Christ. Just uh, so many, I don't know, painful, difficult things in life and realize, wow, I, I couldn't be here today without those. It makes me wonder for you guys, are there any failures or regrets that, that brought you on this journey that that are kind of necessary to have gone through? Well, I've Go ahead. Well, this is a real estate one. There's, of course, a ton of personal ones, but a real estate one that I think I even got a little bit depressed when this one happened. Back at the same time, I was telling you guys about that first initial purchase where I knew I didn't know what I was doing, that triplex. At the exact same time, I also, because of the Carlton Cheese program, I really had, <laughs> I really had the confidence to keep just nailing forward. And I also bought a duplex and I was on a single family home all within the same month. And I was trying to make sure they had tenants, like the triplex already had tenants, so that was a problem. The duplex needed a little bit of work, so that one was going to be vacant. And then there was a single family home also. And so I tried to make sure I had people lined up to move in when it closed. Well, we got to the closing table and the bank pulled the financing. And I'm sure there's plenty of you real estate people out there that have had that happen close to the end. And now we find out it's more common, but at the time it was heartbreaking for me because the family that was going to move in had already given notice where they were living and they literally weren't going to have a place to stay. Oh, no. So I was just so concerned about them and me basically displacing this family that I said to myself, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm not going to do real estate. And this was 17, at least 17 years. Yeah, maybe 18. And so, you know, that was kind of, there was a little bit of a break just because of that. And, and as we move forward, every time that's in the back of my mind, we will not ever try, you know, make sure nobody gets hurt before. Like, just do the steps you're supposed to do. Trust God. God will provide, you know, so that you don't put other people out or, or step over other people or use other people. You know, in real estate, a lot of it's can, you know, value can be subjective and it can be a negotiation. So make everything a win-win, you know. What was the outcome of that story? Did that person, do you know if they were able to find a place? Yeah, they were. They, they were my brother's friend and his wife and they had a little one and they were able to, in the same towel, like two blocks away. So it worked out just fine. But I, for me, it was crushing. Yeah, that, that is hard to go through. And those lessons, we, it seems like we have to learn some lessons the hard way. That's how we are as humanity, right? I want to share a coaching story with you. I mentioned a, a failure. This is a husband and wife. I'm a football coach. I have I played football and coach almost all my life. At one point in time, when I was coaching a little town near here with a, a good friend of mine for several years, and finally we had worked the program up to the point where we were we had elementary and high program. And we got finally when they came to senior high varsity, we got a group of kids that was just super fantastic football players and really loved to play. And and we thought we're going to have a good team. And we did. We finished the season and we went through the first three rounds of the playoffs and soundly our opponents. So we find ourselves at the Metrodome floor on a Friday morning after Thanksgiving at eight o'clock and then be playing the first of several day championship games on that floor. And I'm thinking, oh, this is our toughest opponents. They're also on the edge. I think we can, you know. And so did, so did my friend, the head coach. That was the game, but of course, things didn't go quite as well as I, I predicted. And we lost by a touch. I've never seen so many tears in my life in the locker room after that game, including my own. And that really affected me for a long time. And it was asking God, why second? Why second place? We come so far, we work so hard. Years, it had gone, years went by, and from the time it went to my former players, who had just come up to me with a smile and give me a hug and and say, hey, Coach Wick, how you doing? How you doing? What's going on with you? Oh, you're in college. Oh, you're coaching here. You're doing this, you're doing that. And I finally realized it wasn't second place that the kids were so sad about. It was just the fact that they left, that the season was over, and I could see the success they had. And I felt so blessed to be a part of that success that that out any second place in this big championship game that I experienced. That's awesome. I, I love seeing how when God allows us to touch the lives of others like that, just be, like being used as a tool in his hands, right? That's right. Exactly. So can you talk a little bit more about how God got a hold of your heart and really drew you to himself and helped you to focus more on his kingdom and 
really being more of a kingdom investor. Yeah. You should start. So, which, or, <laughs> okay. It's pretty good. So, when I was, co- when, in my teaching and coaching career, I was on a football, of oh, this time I was coaching, so not hot September day. I remember trying to show the kids how to do a certain type of, Type of move in the football. And the next thing you I know, I wake up on a helicopter being flown to a hospital. And eventually I learned that I had a cardiac arrest. Got put up to the Apple's Heart Institute. The doctor who came in the next day said, Realize you had a 4% chance of surviving this, given the fact that you're wow. coaching up the country. And that turns out so many coincidences. The police and had left his house. A minute before this happened, it just happened to pick up his A, you know, the kind that shocks your heart immediately. I co coach is up near CBR because you have to know CBR as a coach. So many things happen. After the event, I can kind of continue to ask myself and ask, why am I still here? I had a 4% chance that there must be something. And that, that actually spurred us on to sponsor our first child world vision, which led Rachel to have the vision to sponsor. Rest of the children. And that's when ran through me. That was typical in my life. I shouldn't be here. Um, yes, there's a reason. Yeah, uh, right? And I, yeah, absolutely. I know it's that. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to tell this long story. It's so long. So I'm going to try and like kind of condense it, but feel like I came to know him so radically. It, it, you know, I always went to church when I was younger, but I didn't know the Lord. I did not know that he is really alive. He's with us. He wants to have a relationship with us, which means he wants to talk to us as much as we want to constantly ask him for things, basically. And so once I knew he was alive and I could have a conversation with him, I was like, what should I quit teaching? We should go on mission. Like we should be in another country. I should pull the kids out of school. I should homeschool them. You know, what do you want us to do? And I I just remember like hearing a no. And I was like, I because sh- my, my children came to the same public school I was teaching at. And God was like, no, don't pull them out of public school. And I was like, why? You know, shouldn't, isn't this what you do? You homeschool your kids? And he's like, no, because they could sit down and pray at the lunch table with the other students. I couldn't do that. I couldn't, you know, even mention God at all. So I would see these things happen and I started to realize, okay, you know, and we were in a very diverse school and a, a low income school. So I could see God's hand on all of that. That was pretty radical. Then as we continued on, we had six kids. We tried to pour into them. God taught us a lot about praying with them on a daily basis, just kind of developing that character. As, as they leave our home, you know, they will teach their children the same thing. And so he kind of formed us. He helped us understand how to tithe, how to trust him with our money. And then that evolved into the next thing and that evolved into, you know, being able to say, you know what, we can sponsor six children. We have no idea, but God does. God will show us the way. Same thing the very first time to go in on an investment. We're like, okay, God provided money yesterday. (laughs) And we're like being just offered to be an LP and a GP and be a part of exactly what we're learning. Okay. I mean, it's just follow God's steps one by one. Doesn't show us the whole picture. You know, I still probably worry too much about what the next step is, but he's always faithful to show one step after another. And and again, I love helping people. That jazzes me up. Like when I get to teach a new investor, like some tips on how to do it better, more efficiently, or how to help their family even more. So I know that helping, it's not necessarily about becoming excessively wealthy. It's about helping people in all the different stages that we go through this. And we do. It's an investment that we have. <clears throat> had. We have to, uh, our piece of income for those investments. Oh, yeah. And totally. They're, right. they're not just, you know, like I mentioned, you know, that's the apartment complex. That's, so we tied off of income. That was, and we also tied off of local old, old units here. Yeah. And uh, as part of the Des Moines apartments, we have taken a bunch of their money to put them into housing income product projects in that part. We also started to think, okay, remember how we told you we were sponsoring six kids and we actually didn't have relationships with them? Well, we're like, all right, we're being taught how to go buy a hundred unit property. Like, what are we going to do? Go 
sponsor, you know, however many kids. Oh, handwritten letters to those kiddos. Yeah, right. 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 And I was like, oh, that's going to be a lot, you know. So we prayed about it. And then we joined Kingdom REI Mastermind. And we started listening to some of the people there. How did they give back? And we had a conversation, I think it was Steve Libman. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah. he referenced a donor advised fund. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, okay, light bulb. We could go get a donor advised fund. We can still give to World Vision in a different way. We could also give to the communities each of the apartment complexes is in, hence doors to donate. And that's kind of kind of where we're at right now. We've, we've got the donor advised fund up and running. We can grant out dollars that way. Other people can donate to them. Yeah, if you look up, if you look up, ask the little Christian foundation donor advised fund, there's lots of good information. It's is about how people, the people have given back, not just real estate, but yeah. through walks of life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really good. And it really kind of leads into our next question about, you know, what kind of things, especially as you both being teachers, what kind of things can you share with our audience that would help them to grow in their generosity and and really be able to impact more lives in their community and around the world and and think about creating godly legacies. Surprisingly, when you talk to people, oh, 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 whether or not they're Christians, if you propose the idea of giving back or giving back to the community, to other people, oh, most people, well over 90%, are very, very receptive listening to that. The other thing that I would encourage Christians and non Christians alike to think about is how did you get to the point you are? And by whose grace was that? What blessings that you received that may, that you may or may not know where they came from? The only place I'm aware of in the Bible where God's, where the Lord says, test is when he talks about tithing. And I will, we will tell you that is no joke. It is absolutely 100% true. There's times when I've been reluctant to do it, and we've done it anyway. And then you turn around the next day, the next week, something happens that that leads you in a direction. I, you know, it is God's hand at work. And for me, growing in generosity, it all has to come down to your relationship with God. Once you are hanging out with God, literally, you're in prayer. Spend quiet time, however that looks for you. Listen, you know, try and kind of get your mind clear and just. Just be like, God, what do you want to say to me? He's going to tell you. He's going to impress something on your mind. He might give you a drink. You're just going to all of a sudden have a knowing. You know, we can't even say what each person should do. There's, you know, there's things other people have done. Of course, you can definitely mimic what other people have done. But at some point, God made you, you. Hmm. You have a, a thumbprint different from everyone else. Yeah. What's he got you ready to do? And I, I want to add one more thing to that. It doesn't have to be a great big monetary donation. It could be something in your neighborhood, at your school, in your community, just service, working with other people, helping people get back on their feet, talking to people, meeting with them. There's tons of ways to give back that don't involve money that encourage you to, like Rachel said, talk to God and see, see what he does on your heart and then follow that path. On that note, I was I often will ask people, how do you invest your time, your talents, and your treasure. And, and a lot of that's come out in this conversation. I wonder, in particular, your talents, you talk about speaking to new investors. Do you do you mentor or informally or kind of coach newbie investors as well with your talents? Yeah, we have 10 local meetups here. Got lots of people in the local real estate market. Got you know, people to different connections. And talk to them about real estate. And Rachel's, like you said, she's spectacular. <laughs> God has given me the gift of not shutting up about it. I don't know. Like, I'm like, whoever gets on our calendar, I'm like, okay, now go do this. Go try that. I just, I can't help it because it's, it's so fun. It's freeing. It's helping you have independence. It's helping you know that you can rely on him instead of relying on your job. You know, so, so often we put so much credit in that our job's going to take care of us. Yeah. So. It's definitely a faith journey. And we, I can't help it. We're teachers by nature. We probably should be mentored. We should probably be coaching, you know, but. That's something that we've considered. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. You know, we've been asked. We just need to. We, we just, uh, it's on the table. And, and we're yeah. still thinking about it. Sure. Like, yeah, how to formalize it and things like that. Right. Maybe we could talk, you know, at a different time about 
my experience mentoring investors and it's it's been fun. I find it's very fulfilling to accept knowledge and wisdom from other mentors who have been there. And, you know, with your other hand, you're helping those yeah. who are steps behind you. And I think that, that really is the way we learn best. Yeah. What is, what's the, we like to say our ceiling is their floor. Yeah. We, yeah. Like, we definitely yeah. love, I mean, why not? You've, you've taken 10 years through pain and trials to learn a couple of things that if you could go back, you know, I always love it. Yeah. If you could go back, why not just share with whoever's standing yeah. in front of you is trying to get started? I mean, like, oh, then help the next person. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, a, I, I already stepped in that, that pothole. Uh, let me help you avoid it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's good one? Talking a little bit more specifically about legacy, how have you invested to create a legacy for the next generation and what does that look like? You know, we talk a lot about legacy in terms of our kids, but also we have a faith legacy. And so maybe focusing on that, how have you developed your faith legacy and how are you passing down your faith to the next generation? Absolutely. We and Rachel mentioned earlier that as we're raising our kids, try to instill a sense of prayer relationship with Jesus in the two of our children recently. We purchased houses. Whether or not they took our advice is is questionable. But so we've you know, we've kind of helped with our own family. We've encouraged our children to do to, you know, as much as they feel capable of real estate world and, and offered to help to do exactly what you talked about. It was building a legacy for their future. But we also continue to talk to them about the past we have giving back mm -hmm. and that we're not doing this to judge and we're doing this because we're following that's thing and we're trying to give back to, to people the communities that work best. you know the story is not done you know like no. so on our first property that we were you know fully like the lead on let's call it we did a 48 unit god is so like here in our face that the inspector's name was jesus so like even though we never raised large volumes of capital, we'd raised small amounts of capital. That's like, look, this is going to happen. And he literally made it so we could not raise capital until the very end. Yeah. Literally, like we had 25000 in the bank two weeks before it closed. We were, I was having a heart attack. And how much did we have to raise? And we had to raise $1.25 We go to our kingdom group. We ask for like corporate prayer. We're like, okay, <laughs> like, we need, we need the Lord to descend down and help us. And, you know, and we'd been in prayer the whole time before. But for us, oftentimes God shares with us, it's not the last second, it's the exact second. And right. so we need to, okay, because he can. Somebody can just walk up and be like, all right, I want to invest. Here's a million dollars. Like, boom, it could have just been done. We know that was possible. So. Being that God gave us the inspector who's named all of our emails about our property were from Jesus <laughs> email box. I mean, it's like, we knew it was going to happen. It was just hanging on. I mean, even one of the properties is on Chapel Drive. Literally, it's called Chapel Drive. And it's considered the faith district of the city. I mean, it was like, God has just given us so many clues that this is just the beginning of the journey. We know that. So we know us helping people with doors to donate as asset managers. Property owners, we're helping tenants. We're, we're not even fully sure what that looks like yet. And then even if it's just that our kids, I mean, our kids know that I'm so in love with Jesus. They actually got me a birthday cake with Jesus on. Yeah. <laughs> I, like no matter what, we're not going to lose that. And I think just being able to be on different platforms, you know, in combination with whatever part of life God is working in, I think yeah. that's it. And I hope it's not about us when we're gone. I yeah, it's it, all about it. We, yeah, we would like to point to Jesus for, for, for everything that we and do. This particular deal you know, that uh, Rachel's talking about, it says, and us on several different platforms uh, to talk about Jesus and to talk about how he has influenced our lives and in our lives. And Rachel said it well. She said, the journey is not over. There's still more to be done. There's still more mountains to climb. There's probably more crooked paths to walk up the, up the way to the Lord. So uh, we would encourage you to, if you're, or if you're interested in real estate, if you're interested in multi-family, if you're trying to uh, build a legacy for your family, seek the Lord in prayer. See what he wants you to do. Follow his, follow his things. And you should 
You should be. You should be. Okay. That's really good. Yeah. Thank you. So as we get close to the end of our time, before we enter the lightning round, is there anything in particular that you would like to share with the audience? Like I said, for us, every morning we pray, probably many of you that are listening, the Lord has definitely taken a lot of time to develop <laughs> us the way he wants us to be. And so as we do that, we we do a couples. I mean, we work to, we are together all the time and we still love being together. Like sometimes we'll be even like, let's get out of the office and go out to dinner or something. We'll go play cards. You know, we've just been together all day. So we do a couples devotional in the morning. We do a Bible study individually also. So I think the biggest thing for us is continuing to just stay deep in the Lord. Yeah, and we would, you know, time and time on the Bible has, the Bible is a failure and it's also full of stories of uh, uh, people who are, who are not significant people being used for great things. And so I would encourage you, if you think, you're, you're going to fail if you think you're not significant. I would encourage you to remember that the Bible that God uses the insignificant people among us to do great things for his kingdom. And not saying that we're, we think doing anything great. We're, I mean, we're as insignificant as the next person, but we're, we're on a path that we want to be on. Be close to the Lord. We want to help people. We want to know the Lord better through the people that we help. And so that's me, that's been great getting to know some as it ends, getting to know some of the people in the real estate world locally and across the country and just seeing how things change and how influence or change people in their hearts. And so many people are willing to help you on this journey. Like we've never run into anybody that shrugged us off and, and we don't want to ever be like that either. It's just, it's been so fun to meet people. And like Ken said, when people want to give back, they just don't know how to. So you might be able to be a part of that journey and helping them see how they can do it too. I found in my own real estate journey in particular, I had mentors of people who poured into me and, you know, they spent so much of their time, their resources to help me get out of my, the holes I had dug for myself and realize I can never pay this guy back, but that's how it works. Like now that I've learned stuff the hard way, quite often I can reach out and help others who are just getting started and like, Oh, pay it forward. is the way this game kind of works. <laughs> That's totally the Lord. Exactly. Now you just got to get your kids to realize it. <laughs> That's That's the totally part. So besides the Bible, what's your favorite book? When I was a kid, I read a Tolkien Lord of the Rings series. And there are so many parallels in a particular story and Christ, the redemption that Christ offers us, the salvation offers us. So that, when I was a kid, that that was my favorite book. It's kind of held that uh, in high esteem. And if you if you think of this, yes, it was in the Tolkien, there were Christians. There were actually out Christians in their day. Mm. So for me, that was very, very influential as a, um, as a young student. Oh. Okay, and I'm going to throw out a cliche real estate thing. So for those of you that are listening, it was pivotal, believe it or not, even after we'd started our real estate journey, when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by yeah. Robert Kiyosaki, I right. felt like, right. and true. I still couldn't help but kind of go, duh, like, duh. Like, it's just one of those moments. And actually, our children are all 18 to 25 right now. And so for Christmas this last year, we got each one of them a Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. And then we also bought the game Cash Flow to play. And Which surprises me, the kids like it's It's super fun. <laughs> So I was kind of skeptical. I was like, no, we like it. Let's play some more. And interestingly enough, we got COVID over Christmas and our 24-year-old uh, Navy son was trapped at home with us. <laughs> and so we ended up, I was like, please, Eric, just play this game with me, please. You know, and I didn't even know how to play it. And um, so once we sat down, he actually got hooked on it. Mm. And after we were all better and before he went back to base, he was going out with some friends and he actually called home. He's like, are you guys awake? It's like 10 at night. He's like, I'm thinking about leaving my friends and coming home and playing that game with you guys. Would you like to play? <laughs> so then he goes back. He lives in Virginia. He's out of Norfolk right now. And he goes back and he calls and he's like, okay, what's that game? I want to go buy it so I can play with my friends. You know, so that age range, and that's another thing I like to pass on to the listeners, however old you are, it does not matter. You can be an entrepreneur at any age. Yeah. You know, even when we are teaching high school, Kids were like, you can do it now, not have to when you're 30 or have uh, a great job. 
what age uh, were you guys when you moved from teaching, when you, when you let go of teaching full-time and became full-time investors? I was 54. Yeah, and I was 47. Too late for people who think, oh, I didn't get started in my 20s. There's right. lots of time, right? And that's what I like to coach or mentor about creative financing. Everybody's in a different situation. Lots of people have needs. If you're at the right place at the right time and you know the right answer, you can help somebody get out of a house they need to get out of. You can find the right situation or the right person that can help them. You know, just tend to be that person that's open to the win win situation. Yep. Um, Ken's holding another book. Yeah. So we got to, let's not get this on. Okay. Marketing made simple by Don Miller. It's a great book. It teaches you how to step by step on how to build your marketing presence. Yeah. Raising capital for real estate. Yep. By Hunter Thompson. By Hunter Thompson. Can you see it? There you go. There yeah. Raising capital by Those would be two real estate, two real estate books that we have both. Inspired. Yeah. And really, it's for the people that are going, deciding to go into syndication where you actually pull people together and raise capital, you, you have to get into marketing yourself or your company. You have to do something, whether it be advertising. Podcasts. Or, yep, or getting on LinkedIn and really getting out there. And you have to tell people, I can do this. You have to become an expert in your field. So you have to market yourself, which is a little hard sometimes for Christians because we're like, we don't want to be in the limelight. So that's one of the biggest challenges I found, like getting on social media and dip, 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 oh, look what I've done. You know, that's very, very challenging. <laughs> we're actually trying to work through right now. I'm like, Ken, can we just advertise? Let's just try an advertising budget and test it for, you know, four months. But, and you do need to kind of teach other people. We were surprised at how much educating we had to do for every single potential limited partner that would come in, limited investor. People don't know this exists, you know, you have to teach them. Right. Yeah, that's true. So last question here, what is one thing God is teaching you right now? Perseverance, just being able to, being able to persevere in the face of adversity. We, this is our first big asset to manage, not, not just the little onesie twos, dry plex type, type of things. So we, this has been a learning curve. The Lord has told us, I'm teaching you. This is, this is, why, this is my project to teach you all about asset management and and how to take care of things as they come up. And not, not really, you know, there's all kinds of pitfalls and things you can do and things you can do in this position. So Lord is telling us, I'm teaching this person here. And something that he's focused on me, I'm, believe it or not, relatively impulsive. <laughs> I like to, you know, move kind of quickly. And so we closed our 48 last August. So we're almost coming up, you know, on 10 months. And I'm like, oh, you know, we see all these other syndicators, you know, doing them like once every three months and kind of feeling like comparing, you know, comparing to others. And God's really just like, he gave, he gave us a dream back in January of a bear market. We knew a bear market's coming. So we knew to like stop. And that's been tough to just be like, because I love looking at deals and you know, doing the numbers and the underwriting. It's so much, it's like shopping. It's like clothes shopping for me. You know, I'd rather do that with properties. You know, for I wish it was that fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like hop on realtor.com and Zillow and be like, oh, what's for sale? Or, or get on some of those auction sites just to see what's up that week, you know. But so that is really like, not now. He said, get your house in order. And so we've been trying to focus on that. You know, and I'm thinking, I kind of go drastic with the Lord. I'm like, oh, we get, you know, you want me at a real estate type of thing? And no, that's not it. He's just saying not now. And it might be because the economy is all over the place and interest rates are all over the place. And, and, and we know he could walk up a creative deal and put it in our face right now. I mean, he's given us a 1% mortgage before. I mean, God is amazing. Like we have story after story after story how he's proven himself. So we know that's the case. So he just says some things like, get your house in order. We need to, we've been so busy. We have lots of things we need to get done. Our kids are buying houses left and right. We're working on a value add with one of our sons. And so it's just a not now. It's kind of like get some things taken care of and then we'll get yeah, Absolutely. That's good. So what is one thing that we can pray for you right now? We're, well, we're going through a property management changeover and this is our first time. It's going relatively well. So far. <laughs> so far. And, you know, and part of it, I think, is like God's, God's teaching us very clearly yeah. to 
set yourself up and teaching others. So we'll pass this along, you know, set yourself up. So whoever's managing your property, like you keep your own bank accounts, you, you know, keep everything contained. So it's just switching a person doing certain things, you know, even us, like we have a team, a GP and same thing, be able to, anybody should be able to do the job. So if you, so you're, what do you call like indispensable? You're not indispensable. Right. You don't. Yeah. So we're, we're learning how to set up indispensable. indispensable. Sorry. So we're learning how to set it up. So anytime we do need to change a property manager, it's our systems are in place. Right. And I would, I would ask for prayer for, <clears throat> you know, a continued growth in our faith, a continued growth, that desire to give back, a continued movement on that crooked path toward the Lord so that we are close and listening and obeying and just and just being the kind of people that he wants us to be. He's shaping us. And I just I just pray that he would continue to do that. And we wouldn't resist again continue. Yeah, be faithful to do what he says. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. David, would you pray for Ken and Rachel, please? Yes. God, thank you so much for our friends, Ken and Rachel. Thank you for what you're, you've done through them and what you are continuing to do through them, using their their talents, their skills, their time, uh, their willingness to impact people for your kingdom in multiple ways. Thank you for the, the wisdom they've shared today and help, help it to sink in and help us to learn from it. Please bless them as they go forward in this, this kind of perseverance time, learning the stuff with the property manager changeover. And these things are difficult, but once we've learned them, uh, we get better at them. They, they help our business and help us impact the kingdom more. Please strengthen their, their faith in you and their relationship with you, God, and continue to bless them in their business. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, David. And thanks, David and Daniel, for having us on. Really appreciate it. Love to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, before we, we go, how, how can our listeners get a hold of you or look at any kind of investment opportunities you have going on? Well, how can they do Higher that? website, higherpointinvesting.com, higherpointinvesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much for being on today. Thanks again. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a great, have a great day. Take care. <laughs>